Hi folks, welcome once again to Gazab's Tiny Tiny Video and today I'm going to be looking at this. This is the um, Sun SDR Pro 2 DX. It's an SDR radio, really, really modern, um, fantastic software. And yeah, I've got two radios here and I want to highlight and mainly because people keep sort of saying to me, what, what, um, what would I have um, if I could, if I could just bring something home? Well, I'm hopefully going to answer that question with the two radios I have. I also have downstairs the IC9700, um, which in my eyes is just a, an amazing, uh, amazing, amazing rig. I'm not completely au fait with, with all of the things that it can do at this precise moment. And it's going to take quite a while, I think, to really get your head around what the capabilities of what it can do. I mean, it does quite a lot with satellites. It's got D-Star built in, um, it's all mode. You've got um, the remote facility on that radio and all sorts of things. It just really is off the scale. I, mean, I only niggle with it, I think, is that it doesn't, doesn't receive out of band. You're very tight in that, that uh, amateur band. And in my eyes, that's a big mistake um, on, on their part. I think that radio would sell much, much more if it had that kind of extra bit of receive. People like to stray out. When the bands are not so active, they like to stray out, and especially around VHF and UHF, you know, because there's a lot of funny things go on sometimes. So, you know, they like to do that. But today I'm going to be looking at this. This is um, this Sun SDR um, DX. Now, if I get this to work, if we go over to the uh, monitor. Now, this is the, um, the, the software as a, as a whole. What I've, I've got is I've got a few extra features going here, which I'll show you how to do in a minute. I'll close it for the moment. Um, I've changed the background image um, and put a pair of eyes on it, as you do. Um, so you've got quite a lot of, bit of flexibility with this. You, you can change quite a few things. You can customise it. You can change the, the, the colour and stuff of the, of the waterfall and you know, do lots and lots of different things on it, which I quite quite like. There are some other things you can do as well, um, which are interesting. Now, I'm not going to transmit today um, into this. I don't have a mic attached to it. Um, but the reason why I quite like this is because it's got a few built-in features which really lend themselves to things like digital modes and um, CW and, you know, all those sort of good things. Even if you don't know any CW, this is actually kind of almost pre-configured um, to kind of work with um, something like CW skimmer and stuff like that. It's a fantastic bit of bit of kit. So let's have a little listen and see what's on um, and I'll run through some of the stuff. Hopefully it's not too loud. So now what I'm well, let me turn the volume down here just a little bit for you, just in case. What I'm doing here is how I how you tune this is if you if you left mouse click actually in the middle here you can drag this backwards and forwards if you um if you also if you right mouse click on the actual graticule on, on the top you can then drag the background across so you can then whiz across the actual the band itself if you right mouse click on the on the actual uh, frequency bar you can expand and shrink down until you see just a whole load more of the, of the band. And you can see there's quite a bit of activity down in CW and uh, data. It's quite interesting actually, because once you start to use an SDR, you start to sort of see, even with CW, which is a very narrow band, or narrow, sorry, a narrow mode, you can see how much this is all taken up. And then suddenly you've got data here, which is taking up just a, just a, a few kilohertz. And in fact, you can almost get that in one in one slice. And if we zoom in, um, actually, there's something else I'll show you in a second. But what we'll do is we'll zoom in just a little bit there. You can see the separate sort of signals in there, which is quite, quite cool. Now, it's, um, what's the time here today? It's uh, basically, it's 3.05 3 in the morning. Um, yeah, I don't sleep, but anyway, there you go. Um, now, if I drag him, that's over here. 
Let's see what we can actually, uh, see what we can listen to. You've got a bit of gain control up the top here. Okay, so you can add a bit of gain there, if you wish. You've got, all, you've got a bit of control up there. I normally leave it on about zero because it kind of brings the noise floor down just a smidge and you can actually see sort of separate signals. The antenna I'm using here is not fantastic located. It's not a fantastic setup. It's a high gain DX88. Um, it's a vertical. I'm right on the edge of London on a suburb. So noise floor for me is typically around S7, maybe even S8 sometimes. Um, so yeah, so um, they're all fairly sort of quiet coming in at the moment. But what you can also do with this, if I get him over here, is um, I don't know if I said, but if you if you right mouse sorry if you left mouse click, you move the 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 actual um, the, the center frequency or the actual received um, part or the receiver itself, you move. If you right mouse click on it then drag it, you drag the whole thing over so you can recenter everything. If you come down to the bottom here, you can drag, you can tune. So I'm right mouse clicking on the waterfall. You can drag the, the actual frequency up and down then that way. Um, if you click left mouse click on it, then it will just center the, it will actually click and pounce basically. So here, if I want to, I could just, just click and pounce on these 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 sort of things and then I can drag him back to the center by right mouse clicking and dragging it over it's um, it takes a little bit getting used to but the software actually itself is really intuitive once you start getting into it um, and what else we got going on um, I can show you oh yeah there's some really interesting things here so for instance we've got a little bit of noise coming up here I don't want that noise because it's right by this this uh, this thing here. You come up here, you enable the this um, uh, notch filter, add a notch filter. I can now take that, wait till the little ball comes up, and then if you see there's a ball, a line, and then a little ball, you want it so it's a line, and you can drag that then over the noise. Okay, and you'll see now that noise is gone. Um, if you then drag that over and it turns to a little ball, okay and then left mouse click, you can then drag that, that notch filter out so it's a bit bigger. And you can see the notch straight away. It's fantastic. So now that noise is now gone. Now if I want to get rid of it, I can quite simply double right mouse click on it and it's gone. Okay, but the noise has now come back. There's the noise again. So, Let's have a little listen to him and see what he's... Um, let's see if we can clean him up. There is a bit of noise reduction as well that you can use. got here. So what we got coming in there. He's talking to an American station by the sounds of it. Turn the noise reduction off. So let's Let's turn him down again. The other thing you've got on here as well, you've got this um, um, sort of a binaural um, audio effect. So it kind of almost has that sort of stereo sort of sound effect. I quite like that, it's quite nice. Now here I've actually got some um, studio monitors and this sounds absolutely awesome, I have to say. Noise reduction on this isn't bad, it's pretty good. It's not the best uh, noise reduction I've ever come across, but that combination with the um, with the notch filters and stuff and the bit of noise reduction, the fact that you can, you know, the, the gain as well. Um, and also you've got um, uh, um, an AGC level at the top here, so you can really sort of kind of muck around and, and get the best out of it. Um, it's, you do get a really pleasing result. Um, it's not so bad um, at all. Um, what else can we do with it? 
Um, there are a few features in the in the options menu as well that are worth exploring. I mean, I could go on forever with this, and I, I don't want it to turn into a kind of a thing. I, you know, you you, um, you really need to um, to really get to to play with one of these. You need to have a little drive of it yourself, and and sort of. Um, so you know, if you can get down to your local um, emporium and and have a play with one. Um, where I work, we we have one all the time that's uh, that's set up, ready to go. Um, but you've got sort of quite a lot here as well. You, you, I mean, I'm running a piece of software here called um, a CW Skimmer, which you can, I think, you can subscribe to. You can create like a little, um, like a, a an IP type based server, um, and you can do some pretty crazy things with this. And this is all built into this. So you've got this this front sort of front end, which will then talk to the to the CW skimmer server and the, the two work together. So I don't do any CW. In fact, to be honest with you, I, I don't enjoy CW, but it doesn't mean I'm excluded from it, you know, when, when I've got something like this, because I can use it. It's absolutely fantastic. Um, as fast as I can type, I can send CW. Um, and you can set it up. And my advice really is, um, I think with any form of CW, especially when it's talking about machine sort of uh, generated CW, in my opinion, sending it too fast is just crackers, you know, because it means that if anyone um, is trying to decipher this and, you know, um, they're a novice to it, it just sort of a bit, it, it, you know, and not, not really that inclusive. So it's best to sort of send it, at, I think, at a, a nice rate, um, that everyone can can play with, but that's just my opinion. Um, you can create shortcuts and you can do all sorts of things and you can select the one you want and then press the shortcut you want and you, know, you generate really quite nice, um, like simple things. You've got an IQ recorder there as well, so you can actually record the, um, the, the, um, the IQ data. Um, Transceiver control interface. Um, not played with this one, um, to be honest. Um, not played with that one at all. Spot settings. Um, now this is, um, I've enabled the spot settings, I think, or the spots. Um, they tend to be the, um, the actual, um, actually this one might be something else. This might actually be the, um, the actual, um, what they call it, spots. I'll research that. Um, it's not what I thought it was. Um, right, okay, so what else have we got going on there? Um, so we've got device, and this is where you do all the setup, by the way, and again, I'm not gonna do that. I did that once before. Um, you, can, you can set up, you've got a little matrix here, so you can say which antenna port, um, what temperatures, what you know, all sorts of things you want to be able to sort of configure in there. So that is for any warnings to come up, you can set the fan to come on at a certain thing. It's all sorts. Um, in the expert mode is where you set all the basic settings um, and basically change the IP address and find the SDR and all that sort of stuff. Um, like I said, I've done something like that before. Sound card, um, basically this is where you set all the or your sound card up, enable the sound card and stuff like that. VAC, it's got a built-in VAC, which is a virtual audio cable. So you can actually set this to, to do some, you know, virtual trickery in the background. It's great fun. Um, display, this is where you can change all of the uh, bits and pieces um, for the actual overall sort of look. Um, it's even got a 4K display um, mode, which if you've got a 4K monitor, then happy days. You can change all the bits and pieces for the um, for the, the spectrum display. Um, and this is also where you change the amount of data you can see. You set it in here. Um, I can't remember how I did mine, but uh, this is where you do it. You can change the, the colors. Um, you know, you can do all sorts of things in here. You can see just in the background there that it is changing just about. You can set it monochrome, so now it's like uh, like turquoise and uh, black. I mean, as it goes, I I do like my um, my waterfalls to be quite dark, with the signals with a little bit of gain to them, so that you can you can see some of the weaker signals. Um, 
You can change the, the rate that it, um, it is coming through. Um, it's quite slow there, and you can see it's, it's quite it's, you know, speedy there. You can do all sorts of things in here. You can set this to stop in TX mode, and you can get it to stay going in, in TX mode. Um, you can set the transparency of the of the, the actual graticule or the uh, grid, and you can change the colours of the filters and stuff like that. So, yeah, background. You can change the background, um, and you can uh, you can set the indicators to do whatever you like. So RMS or peak power and stuff like that, and you can display that on the on the screen. Cat port, this is where you did all your rig control, which is quite nice. Um, you can actually give it a COM port name, enable PTT, enable cat control. And I can't remember what this actually um, emulates. I think it might be a Kenwood um, off the top of my head. I'm not sure, don't quote me on that, I'll have to check. Um, and also you can, it's OmniRig compatible. What else can you do? Panel, and uh, this is the e-coder. Um, now, the, an e-coder is an optional extra. Um, it is about 279 quid, but it does give you the ability to tune off of the um, off of the, the of wheel rather than than having to tune with a mouse or anything like that. Now, I'll show you what I use in a moment. Um, what what what, uh, what I quite think is is quite good. Um, what else have we got in there? Features. Um, you can set this up to launch other programs when you launch this program, which is um, which is fantastic, especially if you've got something like CW Skimmer. You, you can launch the, the server as well, and then it, the whole thing works together. Um, this one, not so sure about. Um, I'll have to research that. Um, I like to leave some of these sort of questions in because, you know, I don't, I don't ever want to come across as a bit of a know-all. All right? I don't know everything, and um, it's it's important, I think, that uh, that people sort of see that you know I struggle for information as well sometimes because you know it's part of the learning things. You can't know everything, and yeah, I just like to leave everything in warts and all. Um, so that's pretty much it in the in the um, options. You know, there's plenty more to get your, your teeth into. Um, along here, you've got Vox. You can mute the um, the audio. Um, you've obviously got Squelch on and off here. Um, the virtual audio cable you can turn on and off. And you, here you've got Tune uh, facility, so you can actually set a carrier in, in Tune mode. Mox, so you can turn the, the transmit on and off uh, manually, or manual transmit. Um, and that's voice transmit if for those that don't know. Um, here you can actually set up um, two um, uh, receivers. So what I can do is I click on that and now it splits into two. So now I've got two receivers and here I've got one on, on seven megs and one on 14 megs. It will probably change the amount of bandwidth available on both, but there you go. On this one, I've got the blowout um, sort of little meter as well on on the side, which I quite like. I, I think this is quite a nice little little thing. Um, and before everyone gets excited and how how low the noise is, it's just I've got a manual tuner here. It's not tuned for 14, 14 megs, so um, I'm sure if I did, it would be a whole lot higher than that. It looks like actually seven uh, megs is starting to come to life. Um, so let me get rid of that one because it's uh, sort of cluttering. So you get up to two main receivers, by the way. Okay, so and you can set these out. And if you've got more than one monitor, you can actually, if you want to, you can drag this out. If you drop this little box down here, you've actually got a window here which you can pop it out as a separate window. Um, and now I can put that window wherever I want. And if I wanted to, I can drag it over to my other monitors. All right, so yeah, there you go. So I'm going to close that one down for the moment. Don't need that one. Um, like you see, you can just see here that this, this is the beauty with SDR. I can now see that there is actually quite a lot of signal starting to come in um, here. Now that's that's quite interesting. I wonder if they're sort of like the American stations starting to sort of come through because it is um, it is just getting to that kind of good period for for me. 
and typically around sort of five o'clock in the morning, I can start to hear the American stations coming in. I think it's probably the same for everyone in the UK, but for here, it's that's, that's the sweet spot for me um, to hear those stations. Um, you can also um, see see where it's sort of the the end the with this as well you can actually see where the, the tune is you can see that um to this sort of edge on the left hand side of the screen it's a little bit um a little bit noisier now as i tune this you can see that it changes so i'm going to try and tune it along a little bit so you can actually see where the, the hot spot is changing you see it's now drifting over to the right um it's probably just needs a little bit of mucking about with. Um, yeah, so it's quite interesting. I, 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 I absolutely love SDR. I think it's, uh, it's fantastic, really good fun. Um, th look, there's heaps and heaps of things on it. You can do splits as well. Um, XIT, RIT, um, you've got all sorts of things in there that you can change. You can set the AGC, and there's quite a long list of bits and pieces you can do there. You can set the steps. Um, what else can you do? Um, yeah, we've well, got uh, noise blanker. You've got uh, two noise blankers, um, automatic noise filter or notch filter, um, and uh, automatic notch filter. Um, APF, don't know what that is. Actually, not um, audio peak filter. Mm, never use that one that's an interesting one um might have a play with that later and here you've got preset um bandwidth as well um so yeah up the top you've got volume this is a um, monitor um volume so you can set the monitor um and set it on and off down the bottom here, you've got RF gain control or AGC or whatever it might be. Um, it's, it's RF gain control. Here you've got drive, I think that is. Um, that basically is RF power. Um, and on this particular one, it's uh, it's about 100 watts, give or take, um, depending on, on the load that it's going into. Typically, sort of, um, you know, between 85 and 100 watts, depending on how good your antenna is. It's got some fantastic um, protection in this as well, and you can configure that yourself. You can get warnings to come up at whatever SWR you wish. Um, this here is the mic mic gain, and here you can actually set whichever mic you want. Now I've got this set for my PC microphone, which is coming through a Behringer UMC 204HD into an X Air um, mixer, um, all fed up with a one of these, which is a Heil PR40. Um, and that works really, really well. Fantastic, really good. Anyway, I'm gonna leave it there because I don't wanna waffle on. I just wanted you to see this. This is not an instructional video. All right? I just wanted to show you it because I've actually got this home to do a video for work. And I just wanted to, while I was learning, um, just having a little look and just learning the software or at least very refreshing my, my knowledge of it um, that I just wanted you to sort of see it because yeah it's nice just have a have a little look at these things and it's a jolly good um, a jolly good receiver and it's a very good uh, transceiver so I thoroughly recommend it and it is one of the 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 choices that I would make if I were in the market at the moment for um, an HF radio I certainly wouldn't look past that um, it isn't expensive either. I think it's about the 17, 1800 quid mark, um, which isn't bad, I don't think, really, when you consider what you get. The only thing is there's no built-in tuner, but on the back of the radio, um, if I turn it around and uh, let you have a little look. So if I just put the, let's turn that off and then let's put you onto that. So let me just take this, bear with. I um, don't know if you can see that. On the back, you've got an absolute ton of connections on there. Okay, and um, let's go back to 
that one. Um, so it's got an absolute ton of connections, so you can see just how versatile a radio it is. Um, so you can couple this up quite nicely to a nice big amplifier um, for the full legal, um, and it would absolutely walk that, you know, really, really would. Um, the other thing is as well, you can put that into a really nice tuner. Um, as well, I've got it coupled up to this uh, this manual one. Um, it's got a couple of things wrong with it. The, the um, power meter doesn't work anymore, but that's another story. Um, but it's it's really really good fun. Absolutely love it. And this new model, the, this DX model, also comes with a built-in fan now, um, which the other ones didn't. They used to get quite warm. It's good for keeping your um, your, your tea warm. Um, but um, you know, and even then the the um, the Pro 2, the 20 watt version, if you've got an amplifier, don't overlook that one because again, that's a fantastic value for money. Current, really, really um, modern software, one of my favorite pieces of software, if not my favorite piece of software um, available. Um, you know, it's still capable of driving an amplifier. I'm gonna leave it there. Fingers crossed, I haven't uh, bored you to, to bits. If you have any questions on this, please put in the comments um, and, and ask. Um, and that's all I can say really. So have fun, um, stay safe out there. It's uh, not, a, not, a, not a nice place to, uh, not, a, not a nice world at the moment with all this uh, malarkey going on. So, um, but enjoy your radio and have, um, yeah, have fun. Speak to you soon, bye-bye.